This is the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G, the follow-up to two popular phones from last year, the Galaxy A52 and the Galaxy A52s. Those phones were considered great value for money, so what's changed this time around, and is this one worth upgrading to? I'm Will for GSM Arena, and let's find out in our Galaxy A53 5G review. The Galaxy A53 5G is a new mid-range phone that at first glance looks pretty similar to what we saw in last year's models. But once you dig a bit deeper, there are a few changes here and there. Design-wise though, it comes from the same mold. There's a pastel color scheme and the camera bump that blends into the matte back panel, which is made of plastic. The A53's glossy frame is also made of plastic, but the phone doesn't feel cheap. It seems sturdy and smooth. And as we've seen in previous A-series devices, the A53 has IP67 rated protection against water and dust. But one of the upgrades, at least on paper, is that the A53 brings a larger 5,000 mAh battery capacity. Bigger doesn't always mean better though, and jumping into the numbers, the A53 was able to score a 113 hour endurance rating in our battery life tests. That's quite solid, but the same as last year's model. Charging speed hasn't changed much. In fact, it's a little slower, going from 0 to 45% in half an hour. And in most markets, the A53 5G doesn't come with a charger in the box. Another difference you'll find on the A53 5G is a new chipset. It's an Exynos 1280, which is an upgrade over the Snapdragon 750G inside of the Galaxy A52 5G. It provides 5G connectivity and solid mid-range level performance. The UI runs smoothly and the gaming experience is decent. The thermals are okay here too. The thing is though, if you compare the benchmark scores to the Galaxy A52S's Snapdragon 778G, the A53 5G is a clear downgrade, both CPU and GPU wise. So if you're after the most power under the hood, the model from last year has this one beat, and it's actually the cheaper phone too at the time of this review. The A53's display is very similar to last year, it's a 6.5 inch AMOLED with a 1080p resolution, Gorilla Glass 5 protection, and a fast 120Hz refresh rate. The high refresh rate smooths out your swiping and scrolling, but it won't dial down to save energy when you're not interacting with the screen. There is one change on the screen compared to the A52S. While that model had HDR10 Plus support, you won't find that on the A53 for some reason. But besides that, this panel is quite nice quality-wise, with deep OLED blacks, and color accuracy is great. Also, the brightness has improved a bit here. We achieved almost 430 nits maximum with the manual slider, and that boosts up to 830 nits in auto mode when in bright sun. When it comes to audio, the A53 5G has a pair of stereo speakers, but no headphone jack, which last year's models did have. Regardless, the speakers are comparable. They earned a score of good on our loudness chart, and the sound is well balanced. The final notable change you'll find here is the camera quality. The cameras are actually the same as before, but because of the different chipset, the processing has changed a bit. The cameras include a 64 megapixel main cam, a 12 megapixel ultra wide unit, a 5 megapixel macro cam, and a depth sensor. 16 megapixel photos from the main cam are decent, with a good amount of detail, low noise, and solid dynamic range for a mid-ranger. Contrast and colors are a bit too strong here, while the A52S 5G had a more natural look. Portraits come out in 12 megapixels and they look great. The subjects have plenty of detail, and the edge detection is quite good. Shots from the ultra-wide camera are alright, but nothing special. They are rather soft, but at least the colors look much more natural than the main cams. On the other hand, that means that consistency across the two cameras is not great. The 5 megapixel macro camera can produce nice close-up shots that are colorful and have plenty of detail. Since focus is fixed, it takes some trial and error to get a sharp photo. In low light, the main camera is competent, producing shots with plenty of detail, relatively low noise, and sharpening that isn't too aggressive. Light sources are handled well and so are shadows. Perhaps thanks in part to automatic night mode processing that kicks in based on the lighting conditions. There's also a dedicated night mode that you can toggle, which applies more extra strength processing. Its benefits are subtle, and the resulting photos are a lot softer, so we'd recommend against using it. Low light shots from the ultra wide camera are quite messy. They're soft and dark with narrow dynamic range. 
The dedicated night mode doesn't seem to help much either. The small improvements in the tonal extremes come at the expense of considerable softness of the images. For selfies, the A53 5G has a 32 megapixel front facing cam that outputs photos in 12 megapixels. Overall, the quality is solid, with plenty of detail, and decently low noise. The A53 can shoot video with all of its cameras in up to 4K resolution at 30fps. 4K footage from the main camera has plenty of detail, low noise, and reasonably wide dynamic range. Like the still photos, the colors come out quite saturated here. The ultra-wide camera's videos are decent in quality. There is more noise and softness than the main cam, which is expected. Also, the color rendition here is noticeably different. There is electronic stabilization available for video, but only in 1080p resolution. It does a decent job at smoothing things out and handles pans well. Overall, the camera quality is decent here on the A53 5G, however, compared to the A52S, it's a bit of a downgrade. Photos from the main cam tend to be too contrasty, and the colors are very saturated, and the photo and video quality of the ultra-wide camera has taken a dip. Moving on, the Galaxy A53 has expandable storage on top of the 128 or 256 gigs built in, and all that's left to really talk about are the software features, which are largely shared between Samsung devices. The A53's interface is the latest One UI 4.1 over Android 12. It's quite familiar, with unique features like the Edge panel for shortcuts, and proprietary apps such as Samsung's web browser. You get Android 12 features too, like color palettes, where your UI theme can be set to match colors of your wallpaper. And there's the privacy dashboard, which organizes all of your permissions options into one convenient place. You are missing some features, like smart widgets and decks for connectivity, which you would get on the flagships. But you still get one of the most important benefits, Samsung software support for four generations of One UI and Android OS upgrades, and five years of security updates. So that's the Samsung Galaxy A53 5G. It's overall a pretty solid mid-ranger, providing most of the features we loved in last year's models. The problem is, it doesn't have all of them. There are even a handful of downgrades compared to the A52S. And at the same time, this model is more expensive. So in the end, if you can find the A53 5G at a discount, it's a decent Samsung mid-ranger with good software support. But if you have the choice, we'd recommend getting last year's model instead. Thanks for watching guys, stay safe and see you on the next one.